All right, we were successfully able to breach the mainframe and hack right into the motherboard. So we're able to access the BIOS. So now, if you'll see here, this is how we can actually buy tritium. It is a very, it's an illegal substance. So using this hacked mainframe, we can now purchase some tritium. So let's see, let's go for, what, what color are we like in? Green, green's usually the brightest glow color. We'll go with green. Let's get 20 of these bad boys. Add to cart. Ooh. All right, now we're using the hacked version of PayPal. It's like PayPal, but it's hacked. You know, I forgot my hacked PayPal password. Better pull that up. All right, so we were successfully able to order the tritium. Now we did maybe embellish the process of ordering it just a little bit, um, but it actually is illegal to sell tritium in the US, but it's not illegal to buy tritium in the US. So we are able to go to an Asian distributor, buy it from them, and they're gonna ship it to us. And that was legal. We just can't like get it on eBay or any other standardized website because it's illegal to sell for whatever reason. And if you don't know what tritium is, it's actually hydrogen, but it undergoes a process that makes it slightly radioactive and it's not enough that it could ever be dangerous but it's enough that it'll actually glow so it's a gas that glows it doesn't need to be charged by the sun or anything like that and the glow on that usually lasts about 10 to 20 years so because this comes in glass vials it does limit our abilities with what kind of ring designs we can do so we're gonna have to have a unique and completely different design for this one but I think it's still gonna look amazing I'm not a hundred percent sure what we're gonna be going for but I'm probably gonna drop a few sketches show those off to you guys and we'll pick one of them to go with and we've got like a month before this is going to arrive so I've got plenty of time to think it over and figure it all out so I will check back in with you guys once that gets delivered wait a minute Dustin how did you get down here so fast did you fall through the ceiling again you sure did, you sly dog. Okay, but silly transitions aside, we do have the tritium. So I wanna show you guys what this looks like in the dark. So let's just follow me through here. We'll go to my dark, scary basement. So you can see here are the vials glowing in the dark. They're glass tubes, they're full of that tritium gas. These will make for a really interesting ring. I'm excited to start working with this. And I'm hoping this is a ring that I might be able to sell on my website. It's gonna be really difficult and finicky to make, so we'll have to see how the production of it goes. But let me know what you think down in the comments if I should make these available. All right, so our first step is going to be trimming down the outside of our piece of Damascus steel. It's not spinning perfectly centered in my lathe, and so I just need to shave off just a little bit until we're cutting into all new material. That way it'll be perfectly centered and we can have a really even ring. Okay, and now I need to face off the outer surface of our cylinder here, and that's just to even it out. Before it was just a raw cut straight off the bandsaw. So just like on the outside, this gives us an even surface to work off of to make sure everything about this ring is perfectly even. Now I just quickly used a file to shave down the sharp edge here. It was really sharp. This definitely isn't necessary. It was just pretty sharp, so I didn't want to end up cutting myself on it. And then our next step, we need to start to drill a hole through the center of this. And so I'm going to start with a center drill here that gets our hole started. And then I switch over to a drill bit because I'm doing a lot of drilling here. When I do just a simple ring blank, I usually just stick with the center drill. But in this case, since we're removing so much material and it's such a deep cut, I switch over to the drill bit. And then once we get the hole hollowed out enough that we can fit our boring bar in there, that's when we switch over to that. Because the boring bar, it's a lot faster, a lot more precise, and you don't have to keep changing it out every time you want to bump up a size. You just adjust the lathe and you can cut a bigger hole. So I just continue to hollow this out. I stop a little bit before the ring size we're going for because I do want to leave quite a bit of room for safety and I'll be able to trim this down later. So we're just trying to get a general hollowed out cylinder shape here. Then we'll be able to begin cutting the holes for the tritium vials. And once we're done with that, we can go back and then size it exactly how we want to.
And now you'll see me use a combination of Sharpie and these calipers to put lines on the ring. The first line that I draw is to show the depth of the hole that I need to drill to get the tritium vials all the way through. And then the second one on the outer rim here, that's the line in which all of the holes that we're going to drill are going to be. And then the third thing you'll see me do here is I'm cutting this groove into the ring. That way when I'm drilling through the material, I'll be able to see it poke out the end and know when to stop. Now we're heading over to my mill and I first need to lay the whole thing out. And so I've marked a spot where I wanna drill each of the holes. And then I use this center punch to put a little dent exactly where we want each of the holes. This is really helpful because when we're using drill bits that are this small, they're really flexible. And so if we didn't do any of these steps, the drill bit would just wander around everywhere and the hole would just be in a completely different spot. And it absolutely make the ring making process just undoable. We couldn't make this ring without this. So now that we've got those done, we're able to switch over to our drill bits on the mill. And then I've got the whole thing set up on a rotary table. So I drill one hole and then I'll rotate it 30 degrees and then I drill the next one. And then we just continue that process until we've gone all the way around the ring. And throughout this whole process, I used about 10 drill bits. I ordered a pack of 15, and these are special cobalt drill bits, and they're also just a higher grade than most standard drill bits you'd get in a set. And that's very important because I definitely don't want one of these drill bits to snap off inside of the ring. It's a complete nightmare to deal with. And the reason I go through so many is because they can get dull pretty quickly, and I really, like I said, I don't want to take my chances getting these lodged in there. And so every time it goes dull and stops cutting as well as it was, I'll replace it for a new one. And this was totally worth it. I probably spent about $15 on drill bits for this ring, but we're putting hundreds of dollars of tritium in this, and so it's definitely worth it. This is also about $100 of Damascus steel. So this is an expensive ring, and I don't want to ruin it just because I'm cheap with my drill bits. All right, so we now have every hole drilled and we're done with the mill. We're ready to switch back over to the lathe, but we first need to cut the ring off with the bandsaw. So once I've got the piece clamped into place, we're ready to start doing the actual cutting of it. And I turn on the machine and this Damascus steel, it's a really tough material, so you gotta be careful with it. I'm going really easy on the saw here because I don't wanna dull the blade, but that can also have the opposite effect too. If you cut the material too slow, there'll be too much rubbing and it'll cause your blade to go dull. So you gotta be careful with that and get the right setting styled in. You'll see I add a little bit of oil just to add a little bit of lubrication. Now that we've got our chunk cut off, I'm ready to go over to the lathe and I just need to clean this up. That bandsaw left a really rough finish and so I'm just trimming it all away, getting it all cut to a new surface so that we can do some precision work on it. Now we've got that finished and you can see here there's a hole that didn't get drilled all the way through. So I went back and fixed that up. We were all fine from this point on. And then like I said earlier, I'm doing a final sizing to the inside of this ring. So I'm trimming it away very slowly, very carefully because I want a nice surface finish on here. Now it's time to start shaping the outside of the ring, and so I need to mount this on an expanding ring mandrel. And I wanted to show you guys a cool step you can do with your ring mandrels. These are available on my supplies website, and if you just have one of the sizes on hand and you need to cut a smaller ring that won't fit onto your mandrel, you can just trim it away a little bit. And this also has the added benefit of really truing up the mandrel in case there's any wobble to it, because as I'm sure a lot of you know, if you have something that expands like this, a lot of the times you can't get it to be perfectly true. And how true these spin depends on quite a few different factors, like how tight 
that you've got it. So if you're about to start work on a really important, very precise project, I do recommend just trimming it down just a little bit, taking away that layer, and that way you can get a really high accuracy of precision. So for this groove here, I'll be switching between three different lathe cutters. I've got a left hand cutter that I start out with, and then a right hand cutter, and that's to get the edges exactly how we want them. And I want to remove the bulk of the material with these because these are nicer cutters than this disposable one that I'm going to be using next. And the reason I'm using this is because it has a flat edge to it. So I'm able to get in there and flatten everything out, make sure it's all even. and I eventually get it all leveled out exactly how I want it. I had to switch between all the different cutters a couple of times, but now I've got it how I need it. I will need to do quite a bit of sanding to get the finish how I want it, but this is good for now. And next I need to do the bevels on the ring. And so the way I do this is I get my right hand cutter first and I touch it just barely on the edge of the ring. And once I get it there, I rotate the dial on the lathe 30 thousandths of an inch. And I generally like to do about 50 thousandths, but in this case, there wasn't enough room. We would have started to cut into the holes that we have drilled, and so there just wasn't room for that. So in a future ring, I might leave a little bit more space there just so we can get a more defined bevel. But for now, this looks good. It gives it a nice sharp look to it. So I'm happy we could at least get something. Next, I use this power drill and I just have the same drill bit we use to drill the holes. The point of this step is just to clean everything up. We've got a lot of fragmented metal just hanging on there. And so between this and some sanding, I'll be able to clean up all the holes, make sure the ring is ready to have those tritium vials just slid right in. And then to improve the surface finish on the inside of the groove, you'll see I just use these very thin strips of sandpaper. And it's kind of a slow process because I don't have a lot of sandpaper to work with, but I eventually get it down to a surface finish that's definitely good enough for this. But I do eventually get it to a point where we've got a really nice surface finish. And then for the rest of the sanding on the ring, you'll see I'm using this metal block underneath my piece of sandpaper, and that's to keep the sandpaper flat. I don't want to smooth out any of these bevels. I wanna keep it looking really sharp, because like I said earlier, these bevels are pretty small, and just in general, it just gives you a nice cleaner look. So I very carefully sand the outer diameter as well as the bevels up to about 1500 grit and that gets them perfectly smooth and they're ready to be polished. And then for the edges of the ring, I'm just sanding them on a flat piece of sandpaper on the table here. And there were a bunch of burrs around the holes here and so I started with some rough sandpaper. I spent a lot of time on that and then I just slowly polished everything up until I got it perfectly smoothed out and there were still a few little micro scratches in there. But between the polishing and the etching we'll do, we'll be able to completely get rid of those. So I'm polishing Polishing it up. This isn't completely necessary, but it will give us some really nice etching results later on. So I did spend quite a bit of time. I started on the left with a white medium polish, and then I switch over to the right, and that's where I do the fine polish. And that's how we're left with this mirror finish we've got here. Now it's time to go back into the lathe, and this is where I'm going to add a comfort finish to the ring. And you can see I don't use electric tape to protect the outside of the ring. I usually do that on rings, but because we're going to etch this in acid, if I left any little marks on there, they'd be completely hidden with the pattern that we put on it. And so between that and the polishing I do, and it actually, there was no marks visible after I polished it the second time. And then once we etch it, there's just no signs of that at all. So that's why I'm not bothering with the electric tape. And then for the inside, polishing would be a lot trickier here. And so you'll see I'm using some specialty sandpaper. I do the standard 220 grit all the way up to 1000, but then I switch over to the second booklet of sandpaper I've got here. This goes from 1500 all the way up to 7000. And this is some special sandpaper. It's made in Germany and it's held to very high standards. So you can see we get a glossy finish just straight off the sandpaper. So this is awesome stuff. It's really cool to work with. 
Now we've got all the shaping done. This ring actually looks really cool the way it is, just super glossy and reflective. I put a lot of time getting this finish on here, and you can see there are still some grooves in a few places, and as I've stressed before, that's really not important. We're going to be etching this, and that's going to completely hide any of those defects. Now for the etching, I'm pouring out half muriatic acid and then half hydrogen peroxide and then I'm carefully just dropping it down in there. I don't want to splash any, get it on my hands or my eyes or anything, so just carefully dropping it in there. And I let this etch for about five hours. And you can see in this time-lapse that pattern, it just reveals itself and it's completely amazing. It just completely transforms the look of the ring. It went from a really shiny, just pure silver ring into a really rustic, almost wood grain looking texture that it has on it. And I really like the look it has. And now we have one final step to do to the finish of the ring to get it exactly how we want it. So I'm going back over to my ring mandrel and just mounting it on there. And then I'm going to sand the raised edges of the Damascus steel. And what this does is it gives us a polished glossy finish on the raised parts of the ring. And then on the lowered sections of it, it's got that really rough randomized texture that the acid gives it. So that just helps contrast the two different types of steel in the ring. We've got one that's polished and then the other one that's really rough. And this especially stands out in direct lighting where you can see the reflectiveness of the one material and then just how rough and matte the other one is. And you'll see once again, I put stiff materials underneath the sandpaper in order to not have it flex because I don't want to sand any of those lowered sections. So I need to be careful to sand strictly the raised portions. And now the step we've all been waiting for, this is the very last step and this is going to be gluing in the tritium vials. So I've worked about 20 hours on this ring to get up until this point, and we still haven't even touched the tritium. And that's kind of the whole point of the ring. So I waited for this for so long. And when I got to this step, I went and tried to test fit, and there was a lot of the holes where the tritium actually didn't finish. And so I spent at least an hour just hand finishing all those holes. I had to sand them out with some little files to try to widen up the holes and make sure everything fit. But I finally got all the holes to the exact size that we needed, and then we're ready to start gluing these in place. So I've just got some CA glue laid out here, and then this is just a blue stick of acrylic. This is just something I had handy that I could dab a little bit of the glue onto and then dab it into the groove on the ring. And it's important to be careful with this. Once I slide the piece of tritium in, I don't want to rotate it or anything because that'll bring up a lot of the glue with it. And that'll just completely mess up the nice finish that the glass has on it. So you'll just see me repeat this process over and over until I get these all done. I do a test fit just to make completely sure that the vial will fit in the hole. And then I add a little dab of glue there and then I slide it in exactly how I want it. I want to make sure it's flush on both edges and that the glass isn't sticking out on either end. And now we are totally finished with this ring and this felt so good to get done. It all came together so well and the end result just completely blew me away. This was a cool ring to see come together and it was so rewarding to see it all pay off. I was doing all these weird different steps on this ring and I had no idea if it would turn out how I wanted it. And there were a couple things that I would like to correct in a future version, but I'd say this for a prototype was exactly what I had envisioned and I couldn't be happier with it. So that's the ring guys. I've got a bunch of pictures that I'm going to be showing you right now of the ring that I took. It looks amazing in low lighting where those tritium vials really light up. And so I just took a whole bunch of photos. I wanted to show this off the best I could. So let me know what you think. I think this ring turned out really well. I do like the look that it has in the daytime. It's a really clean look. And then at night, this just comes to life. That green glow, it just goes everywhere. It's completely noticeable all the time. And what's great about the tritium is it doesn't need to be charged. So it'll glow like this all night long. And in some of these pictures, you can see see it, even if I'm in a pitch black room, the tritium will light up the Damascus steel and it'll cast shadows over the different textures of it. So it's just such an interesting ring to look at. I think this is definitely up there with my all time favorite ring I've ever made. But anyways guys, I just want to thank you so much for watching this video. I put a lot of work into this ring. I, it literally was over the course of a couple months that we've been working on this ever since ordering the tritium. We had to wait for that to come from China. That in and of itself took over a month. And then once I had that, this was just such a daunting project that I just work on it whenever I had the free time and so I'd put in five hours here five hours there and it was just like once a week that I'd get around to it but I finally got this ring finished and so I really hope you appreciate this video if you did you can give it a thumbs up that really helps me out that lets YouTube know that this was a good video and that they'll recommend it to other people and if you're new to the channel you can subscribe I post two ring videos a week and I do all sorts of different rings and I do a few other different projects here and there and you can of course always follow me on Instagram that's where I post a lot of my coupon codes I do a lot of giveaways there as well as just showing you guys kind of behind the scenes looks at what I'm doing. And as always, you can go to patrickadairdesigns.com. That's where I've got my rings for sale. And if you're interested in making the rings yourself, you can go to patrickadairsupplies.com as well. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.